Hello everyone, the Senpai Code here. For today's tutorial, I figured we'd go over how to do a sphere cast. We currently have a ray cast for the character to tell if we're on ground. Let me just hop in the game here. So what the ray cast is doing is it's shooting a small little line out down below, just below the character here. And that allows us to tell if we're on the ground or not and allows us to do a double jump. So the problem between a ray cast shooting a line down the center of the character is it doesn't cover the whole character's radius so i am at the edge here and as you can tell i'm hitting the uh, a and d key and i can't turn and it just makes the controls a bit sloppy i can go forward and i can go backwards but i can't turn and turn to go back onto the platform from that location so the best thing to do would be to create a sphere cast and that will allow us to make a actual radius a sphere underneath the character and that will tell us if we are actually hitting the ground with that radius that we co actually cover. And I think that would actually be better than a ray cast like what we're actually using. So what is a sphere cast? Uh, we're going to be making a physics sphere cast and we're going to need a origin which is going to be the player and then we're going to need a radius so how big is the sphere going to be and that will just be the same size as the capsule is and we'll actually just put it uh, down so we're going to need a direction so we're going to put it down and then the hit info if uh, something's hit we're going to be able to tell is true so if it hits something uh, anything really everything then we're going to say that it is true and we're going to need a max distance which is just going to be probably at the capsule right before it ends and then the bottom half of the sphere will actually just pop out from where the character is and that will allow us to know when we're actually on the ground and then we're going to need a layer mask and then a trigger. This is a pretty simple script we will be modifying this quite a bit as we do have our own little advanced movement script here and this is what we're actually going to be changing is the ray cast hit to a sphere cast. So I will be changing this around and then I will be adding a few more things up top here and that should be able to cover everything. We will have to add a layer mask but I'll get into all that when we start doing this sphere cast here. So let me write this out first and I'll see you guys back here in a second. Alright and here we are with the new code. So everything in the green is what I'm going to use as an example of what the reference was to. So you have your origin, you have your sphere radius, you have your direction, you have your out hit, your max distance, and your layer mask, and that goes into the trigger. So because this is a custom advanced movement and I do have a custom character with a whole bunch of other scripts, I'm going to be doing this a bit different, but it's still going to fall in the same categories as uh, like out hit and distance and all that. So the first thing that I had to do was add a public float sphere radius. Now if you don't have a custom character, you can add a private vector 3 origin and this is where your origin will come from and then you will have a private vector 3 direction and then a public float max distance. And you can actually set your max distance here if you wanted to or you can do what I did down below which I'll go over here in a second. And then you will have your public layer mask, and then I call that layer mask. So you would do origin equals transform dot position, and then you'll do your direction, uh, and then you will go into your raycast hit. But because what I'm doing this dot transform dot position plus this dot get component capsule collider dot center, I'm going to be using it as the center of the capsule collider is where I'm actually going to be casting the start of it out through the center rather than having it uh, go at a different position like the top, bottom, or wherever. But this right here with the this dot transform dot position plus this dot get component capsule collider center is all in one category and that is the origin. This is the origin where it's going to shoot. So you have your origin and then you're going to have your sphere radius. And so I have my sphere radius up here and that is at 0.5 F. So you could just put 0.5F here and then take off that radius, but I'm just going to keep it there and I'm going to keep that just because I may want to change the radius later on down the line and it is public. And then here is my vector 3 down and that is the direction. You can either do it this way or you can put it up here. And then you have your out hit, out hit here and then you have your max distance. 
So my max distance is 1.0F and that will just be at the bottom of the capsule collider. And then you'd have your max distance here as well um, if you want to do it this way. And so that falls under the max distance and then you have your layer mask which is this layer mask. And then you have your trigger which is right here. So as long as you have all of these in then you're all good. So to see where we're actually casting, I ended up doing a private void on draw uh, gizmo selected. And so what this is going to do is it's like a debug. It's just going to show the line where we're actually casting. And so gizmos.color equals color.red. So it's going to be showing a red line where it's going in red uh, sphere. So the debug dot draw line, so the red line. So where are we going to have it? It needs to start somewhere. It needs to go somewhere. So we're starting again at the origin, so the transform dot position and the capsule center. And then we're going into the origin plus the where it's being cast from. And then we're going, where is it being cast down? It's being cast down. And then how far? It's going about one. And then we have the gizmos dot draw wire sphere. So that's the sphere at the end that we want to actually see as well. So we have to draw it as well, not just the line, but the sphere. So we have to do the draw wire sphere. And then we're doing the same thing. We're doing the origin plus the direction and then plus how far is it going. And then the sphere radius is what else we need to call. So with this, it should call a red line. So let's go ahead, everything is saved, everything should be good. So here we are in game. So if I click on the character here, we have that line in the center. It's kind of hard to see, it is a bit yellow there. And then we do have that sphere, which is outlined as red. Now we can't move because we actually don't have the layer mask and with the character controller that I have, you need to be able to contact with the ground to be able to move. So for the layer mask, let's just select everything. And then you can actually change the sphere radius here. And then if you wanted to change the amount, so if we want to actually make it less or more, we can simply just go here and then change right here, which would be the max distance of how far it's going to be going down. But this should actually do perfect right here. I might move it up a little bit, it's half out. So now if I actually click in the game, I should be able to move now that the layer mask is selected. And we shouldn't have that problem that we had before. Let's just wait for this little thing to go. So if I go to the edge here, I'm still able to move. Everything feels a lot better than if we had that uh, uh, ray cast with that one line. It wouldn't be hitting anything, we wouldn't be able to move. Now we're able to actually move on the edges we're allowed to actually turn and go back onto the ledge from being where we are but yeah it will hit multiple objects as well so it will hit the platform and the the one movement and the one that we're on it will hit both of them and that's the good thing about it and it's the same radius that our character is which is what we want and we still can do the double jump and everything you can see the how far it goes out so that's all there is for a physics uh, sphere collider uh, hopefully this helped you guys out. I will be doing probably more stuff in the future with it, but we'll get into that when we get farther in the action adventure series. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. If you did, leave a like, comment down below. If you're having any trouble, comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you guys next time.